today's episode of Identity, private practice dentist and musician Dr. Alexander Rohani pops by for coffee. We head to Mayfair for the Sultan Bar Centre annual family feat. Our What's Happening segment features the review of an English tutor app and a book by N.C. Masinyanichak. And Priyanka closes off the show with a studio performance. An individual with an imagination My inner faith illuminates innovations In a space with infinite inspiration I was born free from all incarceration Incredible, living infallibly Intelligent, outshine with my inner being This is me, impeccable as ever been I am you, you are me This is my identity Mwenye ni kuni nonge mabukeli bemzanti for sure. Namkele kile kwenye inkubo enomfuto eni tanda kakulu e ingoleza sukene e identity kona apa ku SABC one. Dingu msasa zwe nu uviwe kwaala. The 10th of May marks Buddha Day, which is also known as Wesak Day. This important Buddhist holiday commemorates three significant events in the founder, Gautama Buddha's life, which is his birthday, his enlightenment, and his passing away. This observance begins at dawn when Buddhists gather in temples and commences with cultural performances, which include song and dance, as well as participation in plays about Buddha's life and teachings. Some community groups show generosity by donating food and gifts to the poor. We wish our Buddhist viewers a happy and peaceful Buddhist day. Galon Deto, Tatiko Miki Yakwe Gov, Upole, or Nabel Ogamba Pambil, Essing Patelecon and Amsanji. Go Kala, Masitiban and Undo de Lut, Kuvingly at Yakov. The young man joining me for a chat today is no stranger to sickle probes, mouth mirrors, dental nippers, cotton pliers, as well as saliva ejectors, to name a few. Dr. Alexander Rohani, also known as Dr. Smile, holds a Master's in Science of Dentistry and a Bachelor of Dental Sciences from the University of Witwatersrand. In the year 2011 to 2012, he completed his community service year in the SANDF Ladysmith F5SAI Battalion as the Army Dentist for 1,500 soldiers and their immediate families. Dr. Alexander also volunteers for numerous community development classes and outreaches and has been awarded the Golden Key International Honor Society Award for Service to Humanity. In this busy schedule, he also is a professional musician, a model, and also does some television presenting work. With so much on his profile, I had to invite him to take a bite of how he does it all. Dr. Alex, welcome to Identity. Thank you so much. So good to be here. Yeah, such a huge profile. That's very kind of you. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. What was your upbringing? like my upbringing really was based on the teachings of the Baha'i faith my parents made sure not only myself but all of the siblings grew up with the understanding of what is equality what is unity what is justice what is awareness how bad ignorance can be for you and so my parents really brought us up understanding these concepts we were never the type of children to always get our way um, we had a very good sense of, of how to be aware of the suffering people around us are experiencing um, and the position we were in ourselves, especially with regards to resources, especially materially, and how important it was to be able to use that mm -hmm. to help uplift those around us if we had it. So it was a constant understanding of, okay, you're here as a human being, um, you have a soul you have to develop. Your biggest way you can develop is through service to humanity, is through helping others, is through your relationship with God, is through prayer, is through acquiring virtues. Okay, so with those spiritual principles that you've learned, how has that shaped you and molded you into the person that you are today? I think what's so important, it's not about me. It's not about any of us saying, oh, look at me, look how great I am, look what I can do. Yeah. It's literally saying, I can realize that God put me here and he's given me a whole host of capacities I can develop. Mm -hmm. Let me use that to be able to help. Mm -hmm. And then when it's taken away from yourself and you don't think it's about you, then it's like, oh, I can do this and this and this and this yeah. and this. As long as I'm doing it to help and uplift other people. Yeah. So let's talk about you being a dentist mm. and you graduated in 2010. Nice smile. Th yeah, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Smile. So tell us about that. So I applied for dentistry and I got in and I, I saw that I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed it because I was good with my hands. I have a very artistic side um, and that's very necessary in a, in a 
profession that is so creative. Oh, yeah. um, or let's say a creative dentist, I feel, is a lot better. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you say, OK, I was not so bad at theory, so I got through, you know, um, and I did well and well. And, I, and, I, and then I saw the beauty of being able to take a, f a little bit of ceramic or composite or acrylic and change someone's whole life. Sure. Right. Yeah. Give them a smile that they've lost mm -hmm. along the way mm -hmm. or help them find it, mm -hmm. you know, and th that feeling is amazing. It's really second to none. So is this why you started the Dr. Smile mobile unit and did you achieve what you hoped for it initially? Oh, when I started it, I didn't have the resources on my comm server. So I started getting samples together and using my own time and going to schools and doing education for like masses because um, at least you educate what yeah. to eat, what not to eat, what not to do uh, at school, what to mm -hmm. brush before you sleep, blah, blah, blah. That helps a lot, right? Hygiene. You did right. Hygiene. So I did all of that and that's where it developed. This, I call it like the super schools program, right? And then as soon as I returned back to Josie after that year, I approached Colgate um, and I said to them, listen, I want to do this. Give me the stuff. And they did. You know, I was really happy with their, their support of my idea. And I just drove around to areas in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. that don't have access to clinics. Mm -hmm. And I'd go for two weeks at a time in each area. And I just stay there and I treat the kids in the school as much as possible. Um, but the problem is, the reality is, I go to one school, there's like 500 kids that need dentistry, yeah. right? Each of them with 10 holes in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll just do the maths, I'm gonna be there for like five years, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just one of me. So, you know, you do the best that you can. But what's lovely is that I've developed this now because I'm involved with WITS, I'm a lecturer at WITS. So I've paired with the Department of Public Oral Health. Okay. And so we're actually doing something where all the students become conscious of the fact that this is a reality in our country. Mm -hmm. And they should also pair this, use their time, not only for high-end dentistry, but for the masses mm -hmm. to help people. Mm -hmm. So we're actually rolling out a better program mm -hmm. through the university and we'll get a lot more traction. And, and this is what I'm very excited about. You're an inspiration to many young people. You're a tutor, you're a facilitator. So what words of wisdom would you give to our viewers who are truly inspired by your story and actually want to follow in your footsteps? It's really important for people to know that we're just the same. Mm -hmm. I've just realized the capacity that I have. Mm -hmm. So everyone just needs to realize their own capacity. And the way you realize your own capacity is through beginning to help other people. Mm -hmm. Don't sit and say, oh, I need to first find myself mm -hmm. before I go and help other people. It doesn't work like that. You go help other people, then you find yourself in well, the process, in right? Yeah. You know, it's a realization that you are there to spiritually develop and that is done through your relationship with God. Use your time in helping others and you will find your purpose. Okay, so we're gonna play a quick word game. True or false? You need to answer true or false. Cool. All right. Singer Miriam Makeba was the first South African to win a Grammy Award. True. Mm, good. Table Mountain is the seventh wonder of the world. True. Ding! The first heart transplant was done in South Africa. True. Do you have to get everything right? False. The 2010 Soccer World Cup was held in Nigeria. False. Dr. Smile is the first dentist in Africa to create grills. Of course, true. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Smile, you. for joining us on Identity. I had so much fun. Thanks, baby. Lexi is such an inspiration to young people, and we wish him well as he continues to impart and lend a helping hand to people from different communities. May he continue to uplift and bring about positive change in our country. From exile to the pulpit. This is my identity. This is my identity. Namkele kile kwa kona ni sabu kile inko weni tanda kakulu e inko leza shukeneyo i identity kona pa ko SABC1 mzansi for sure. Tingu fi rekwala inko smo shala nati. We pride ourselves in different initiatives that bring about positive changes in our communities. So when we received a Facebook message from Nafisa Dengo about an annual event taking place at the Sultan Bao Center with the Healer Heart campaign as the driving force, we could not pass up the opportunity to showcase the story. This is what Nafisa had to say. 
Hello Identity Team, my name is Nafisa Dengo and I'd like to invite you to the 17th Annual Sultan Bau Centre Family Fete at the Jubileum Park in Mayfair, Johannesburg. The main aim of this event is to fulfil our spiritual duties as the Muslim community by serving and helping those in need. We hope that you'll grace us with your presence and come to witness as we uplift others. Yours faithfully, Nafisa. Goba sitanda ukwabela na nani ngama bali afana na lawa. Sisa mkele sime mwesika Nafisa. Sitate i kamera zetu salpeki sa eme ife. Ikala leti libu yenuko. This is my identity. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Welcome to the 17th Annual Sultan Bau Center Family Fete in Mayfair, Johannesburg. I'm Nafisa Dangle. I'm really glad that the identity team has extended our invitation and come to see how the community gets together and makes a difference over the Easter weekend. From cataract operations, dialysis sessions, national drug rehabilitation centers, and an orphanage, the Sultan Bau Center is making a very serious difference. Let's go and find out more about their Healer Heart campaign. Sheikh Chabdad is the founder of the Sultan Bau Center. Sheikh, what is the main purpose behind the center? Give us a brief introduction. The whole purpose of Sultan Bau Center is to sing a song of love to humanity, to individuals, to groups, and to make a difference in their lives. And the difference can be made with, with love. Everything we do is the, the holistic concept is love, to touch people with love, to talk to people with love, to treat people with love, to help people with love. Love is an overriding, overriding motto. Tell us about the spiritual teachings and the ethos that Sultan Bau is based on. The key ethos is to heal a heart and to make a difference in people's lives. Talk about individuals' commitment to serving humanity. If they can give the time voluntarily to help us in our work that we do on a voluntary basis, and that's also to be colored with love, because without love, you cannot give your services fully as a volunteer. To care, to share, to give, to forgive, and to mend broken hearts. Mr. Ahmed Akub is the project coordinator of the Sultan Bahu Center. What is the main purpose of this event? The purpose of this event uh, as an NGO, uh, and it's very critical for us, that we create sustainable models uh, of fundraising. And this is one of those models of, of, of fundraising that we've created and uh, it sustains many of our projects. Uh, and it's also a way for us to meet our, the beneficiaries of our funding as well as key stakeholders. Talk to us briefly about the Heal a Heart campaign. The Heal a Heart campaign is one of the signature campaigns of Sultan Bauer Center. And to be present and to be a witness to someone in pain is, is an absolutely humbling experience. And we are at that cutting edge where we meet people who are absolutely in pain, whether it's a dialysis patient who is about to die or, or a cataract patient who, if they do not get that uh, uh, operation in time, will go blind, or a child who is homeless or a drug addict who is on the streets if we do not intervene. So we intervene at the point where the heart is broken. What does it take to organize an event like this? It takes months of planning, I think six months in advance. There's a whole team of us that get together from uh, logistics to set up. Uh, if you see this, the setup before the fate is actually on, it's a piece of land that we, we create into a city basically for the four days. So um, from the food to the setup to the tents to logistics to, to the stall holders to planning, uh, it's, it's amazing how we, we put this together. How important is it for the youth to get involved in this? Community development is, is our core focus with going with our Hila Heart team and to get the youth involved at this stage is vital. Uh, they learn uh, responsibility, they give their time, their effort, um, they, they, they see what's, what, what, what the challenges are and to have them here for the four days and, and, and let them be busy with uh, getting involved from parking to cooking to the kitchen to uh, things that they probably wouldn't do. For them to know that outside their bubble is, is a world of challenges that they could be faced with if, if they are not on the right track. Please give us some insight into the Sultan Bau Center's drug rehabilitation uh, center itself. Um, 
the Sultan Bauer Center in uh, Cape Town, the Drug Rehabilitation Center, has three branches. And um, the first branch started in uh, Westridge. We have a branch in Nova Park and we have a branch in Pontyville. And uh, Alhamdulillah, the success has been so far thus that uh, the center is the leading service provider in substance abuse treatment in the province. And this is also um, the reason why Sheikh wanted us to open up a center here. And uh, since uh, February the 20th, we've been open, the doors have been open. And um, so far we've seen, I think, about almost 40 people coming through the doors. And uh, there are some of the people that have come through the doors since day one that are still clean today. Lana, how imperative is it to give back to charity to people in need from the Islamic perspective? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are spoken about charity, the importance of charity and advised of charity regarding charity and the importance of charity to humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'amuruna bil ma'roof that you are the best of ummah, that you are best of nations that have come from the people. You enjoin that which is right, that which is good, and you forbid that which is evil. In order for us to be good people, we must have social-minded skills, we must be helpful to the poor and needy people, we must have this, uh, this, this kindness and this compassionate uh, compassion for the poor and needy people, and this is what Sultan Bahu Center is all about, to reach and to heal hearts out there. Identity viewers, there you have it, insight into the wonderful work that the Sultan Bau Center is doing. We'd like to thank our supporters for this year, and we do hope you join us next year. From myself, Nafisa Dango, goodbye and God bless. Thank you to Nafisa Dango and the members of the Sultan Bau Center for sharing with us and our viewers the good work that you and the volunteers do for the community. May you continue implementing positive efforts in uplifting the lives of those in need. Ukuba nani nalo ibali ela kanayo eni gatano kwa bena nangalo ne karale identity kwindao eni sala gulo. Ni nga kwenza oko kukustumeli nwa tikutilesi identity tv show at gmail.com. It's time for one more break. When we come back, we head into today's What's Happening segment, which features the review of an English tutor app that will help improve your grammar, as well as an inspirational book by local author Nobambo Carol Massignani. We'll be right back. This is my identity. This is my identity. Welcome back. You're still watching Identity right here on SABC1 Mzansi for sure. I'm your host, Viwe Kuala. If you've just joined us, here's what you missed. We got the show off to an inspirational start with private dentist Dr. Alexander Rohani. We then headed to Mayfair for an annual family fete hosted by the Sultan Bao Centre. Now it's time for this week's media review segment. This is What's Happening. The improvement of one's vocab and grammar is vital not only for daily communication, but also helps boost one's self-esteem and confidence. Today's app will help do just that. It's called English Easy Tutor Language Grammar Basics app. Let's check it out. English Easy Tutor Learning app is a fun brain booster designed to help you improve your understanding of the English language. This kids friendly quiz app will help improve your English grammar topics and spelling. The home page provides you with different tabs such as learn, quiz, my scores and more. Perhaps you'd like to spend some hours learning about different grammar modifiers. Click the learn tab to get a list of definitions which includes adjectives, nouns, verbs and more. Click any of your preferred options to first get detailed info about the grammar modifier. Then click the quiz tab to get fun and challenging questions. The app provides you with new categories and quiz questions on a daily basis. There are three different levels to complete in each category you play. There's easy, medium and hard. Get an answer right and you'll move up a level. Maybe you want to track your progress throughout the quiz. Click my scores to see your scores. Perhaps you like a specific chapter or quiz and you don't have time to play it. You can add it on your favorite tab by simply clicking the orange star and it will be added automatically under favorites. The app also gives you an option to share your scores on Facebook, Twitter and also challenge your friends online. Make sure you learn and improve your English and basic grammar by using English Easy Tutor Language Grammar Basic app. 
I'll most certainly be giving that app a try. Now on to our next review. It's a book that shares a pastor's journey from her life in exile right to where she answered her calling into ministry. It's a book by Nobambo Carol Masinyani Jack called From Exile to the Pulpit. Let's page through. From Exile to the Pulpit is a novel written by a Methodist minister, Nobambo Carol Masinyani, who holds a diploma in theology at John Wesley College. The book takes us to a journey of a young woman whose story begins in complete darkness and hopelessness, but ended in glory and joy. The book is divided into nine chapters, in which the author motivates and uplifts the reader to never surrender in some of the chapters. The reader can read different chapters like Journey to the Unknown, The Voice from the Wilderness, The Return, and The Landing. The book touches on themes like hope, faith, and prayer. Chapter 1 of the book starts with a quote from the Bible as a reference to what the chapter will entail. The author highlights the struggles she faced while she was in other countries around Africa. In Chapter 5 of the book, the author gives an in-depth story about spirituality and believing in Almighty God, sharing nostalgic moments about her spiritual background and how she understood the love of God. The author unpacked her story about life in exile to her journey as a full-fledged minister in church. If you're looking for some inspiration and spiritual tools to help you grow your faith and understand God's divine love, get yourself a copy of From Exile to the Pulpit today. Before we wrap up today's episode, a quick reminder that Sunday the 14th of May marks International Mother's Day, a day set aside to show appreciation towards mothers and mother figures. On this day, mothers and mother figures are showered with gifts and shown appreciation for their love and vital roles they play in our homes and communities. We wish all mothers and mother figures a happy Mother's Day. We've come to the end of today's episode of Identity. We hope that our guest, insert and reviews have left you inspired and motivated. If you have a positive community story to share with us, simply let us know by sending a detailed email to identitytvshow at gmail.com. We're also active on the social media scene. Search for Identity TV Show on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Identity City Salanka Priyanka, take it away. Take a degree for you to understand